This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the dude. Welcome back to the Hey Bartender Podcast. I am your bartender for the evening. I am the dude, so that's what you call me. Uh, this is the Wednesday Quick Shot episode. Let's just uh, just have a quick one midweek. Got to work tomorrow, so this isn't going to last very long. So, uh, But uh, glad you're here. Glad you're uh, sit, able to sit down. This is the only bar right now that allows 100% occupancy. In fact, I'll even let you go up to 250% occupancy because the fire department hasn't seen my bar and my bar is basically the world. And what does the world contain? You guys. In my imaginary bar, you don't have to wear a mask. In my imaginary bar, everybody gets along with everyone. There are no problems. There are no issues, unless the bartender tells you there are. So, let's start off with the drink special today. Uh, since I've got all the ingredients of the world, since this is completely virtual and fake, uh, I can make whatever the hell I want and pretend whatever season I want. And right now, I want to pretend it's summertime. Maybe around 80 degrees. Let's not go crazy. And the sun's out. Everybody's feeling good. Everybody's feeling loose. And so today I decided to get on uh, tasteofhome.com. And I found myself a recipe for watermelon margaritas. Now you got to check this out. So let me tell you how to make this. First, your ingredients. Two medium limes. One third cup of sugar. Eight cubed seedless watermelons. One inch each. Uh, two cups of ice cubes. Two cups of tequila. Holy shit. Oh, this is for a big dump thing. Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you how to make it anyway, and you guys can figure out the math later. Uh, one cup of triple sec and one quarter cup of lime juice. Directions go as follows. Cut one lime and 12 wedges. Reserve the gar- for garnishes. If desired, coat the rim of each glass with sugar. Cut remaining lime wedges. Using these wedges, moisten the rims of the 12 cocktail uh, margarita cocktail glasses. Sprinkle sugar on a plate. Hold each glass upside down. Oh, bartenders know how to do that. Place half the watermelon in the blender. Cover and process until pureed. That should yield about three cups. Add half of each of the following uh, to your blender. Sorry, yes, this is a blended drink. Ice cubes, tequila, triple sec, and lime juice. If desired, add add a little sugar for taste. Uh, Blend the shit out of that. Served in those prepared glasses and garnished with a lime. Now, uh, you guys will have to try to figure out uh, how to uh, break that down so you can serve it to one customer at a time. Or maybe if for some of you bartenders out there that do mobile bartending or just people that are listening to the show just for something to do uh, in the back. Uh, you know, something to listen to in the background, you know, serve up the big thing. Why not? You know, be the life of the party. And that is one of the ways to make a watermelon margarita. So, uh, you know, if you guys decide to try that out, uh, email me, dude at heybartenderpodcast.com. I'd love to hear what you guys think of these drinks I keep throwing at you. And if you just have any questions or you have any interesting stories, email me. I want to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear your stories. I'd love to have you on the show even. So just email me, dude at heybartenderpodcast.com. And don't forget to visit the website, www.heybartenderpodcast.com, where you can listen to previous episodes or you can uh, pick up, pick yourself up a t-shirt, help support the show. And, you know, when you go back and you listen to previous episodes, you might hear something you missed or you might hear something that you wish you missed, but you can't unhear it. That's the way it is for everybody. Unless you're one of those people that hear only one word and that word that screams out to everybody, uh, uh, screams out through your whole body. And that's the only thing you heard and you took the rest of the story out of context and got offended by it. But I don't mind. You know, uh, as long as you have a good time in my bar, you let me know what the problem is, and I will fix that. I swear to God. Of course, it might it might take me a couple weeks to try to figure out. Well, how do I get around that without offending 
that person because everybody else thinks it's funny or interesting. But, you know, I want everybody to get along in my bar. My bar is a peaceful place to go. And, you know, we go, we come in, we share stories, we joke around. And this, got to remember everybody, this podcast is about the servers. It's about the bartenders. It's about the cooks, the dishwashers. You know, I would love to uh, see it from a customer point of view, but I am one of those bartenders out there that does not drink alcohol. There's no reason behind it. I don't sit back and say it's bad for you. It causes heart problems. It uh, uh, stunts your growth. I don't say anything like that. The reason why I don't drink is because I choose not to. That and I'm half Asian. And being half Asian, you have this gene in your body where if you get alcohol in your system, you turn bright fucking red. And, you know, I I remember in my younger days, some of the people that I hang out with, and they see me, you know, drink a beer, and then all of a sudden I turn bright red, and uh, I happen to be hanging around a guy that's pre-med, and he sat there and thought, oh, my God, he's going into anaphylaxis. And I'm like, dude, no, fuck, leave me alone. I'll be fine. Just give me 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, I experimented with alcohol, but now I'm 44. I, the experiment is over. You know, leave it to the kids or the connoisseurs of beer and wine and out whiskey. But enough about that, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what we were uh, my original thought that I was going to talk about on tonight's episode before. Uh, well, actually, originally tonight I was going to do an Instagram live show. But uh, nobody showed up, so uh, got to do it the uh, got to do it this way. Let you guys come in and into my bar at your leisure instead of telling you that I'm going to be at a certain place at a certain time, because some of you guys are really busy. And I plus I did it late at night. Most of you are at work. Actually, a few people showed up, and maybe they uh, just saw my face and went ah. But you know, it doesn't hurt my self esteem at all. It happens all the time. But originally what I want to talk about today, there's been a couple times on Instagram where I've put up uh, a couple surveys, you know, asking various questions, and I decided to uh, ask the question, what do customers do that annoy you the most? Now, uh, if there are people, civilians, if you, want to, uh, if you want to put a label to it, it seems like everybody wants to put a label to everything nowadays. Uh, the civilians that don't work in the service industry or haven't worked in the ser- service industry, there are things that you guys do that are fucking annoying to your local bartender or server or whatever. Now, I don't know what you're used to on that high horse and that high s- steeple where you guys, uh, some of you customers hide, but there are some things that are just flat out rude that your bartender and server are constantly every day fighting the urge to staple your face to the wall because you do it first one that came up excuse me can i get some service over here snapping yes snapping is fucking annoying i get uh i had a number of people that do that and i got pretty good at ignoring them let them snap until their fingers broke and then they'd get mad at me uh get mad at me because i didn't you know, serve them. And I'm like, dude, would you look at the bar where I was work actually working at and serving drinks? I am five deep, five wide. I am not going to turn around, walk away from all of them just to serve you. And, uh, and because he was the way the bar was set up where I, uh, where I worked, where this story comes from, it was in an L shape. And on the little part of the L, uh, was where the bartender sat for majority of the night because that's where the pool tables were at. That's where the golden tea, the video poker machines. So all your attention gets put over there, and it's at one point in the night, the restaurant side of the bar, the, the long part of the L, closed. So you close down that uh, side of the bar, and you uh, continue work on the other side and turn off all the lights in the dining room. Some people paid attention to that. Some people didn't. But... When all the all my attention is trying to wean down that five people five uh, wide five people deep, some people get ignored and they refuse to get into the line of sight of the bartender because we don't have eyes in the back of our heads, and uh, they get mad and they start hello doing odd things to get your attention. 
Now, some people out there would uh, probably say, well, that just means you report, uh, you report bartending. No, it means I was working alone. My bar was open until one o'clock and from nine o'clock till one o'clock, I was by myself. I sent my waitress or waiter or whoever was working with me. The kitchen closed. They all went home nine 30, uh, after their side work was done. And I don't have eyes in the back of my head and people refuse to go around and actually, you know, go to the bartender. They expect when they sit at the bar, no matter where they're at and, uh, and they're going to get served. And there was even one guy that tried to get my attention. Every time I heard him snap, I couldn't see him because he was sitting behind the point of sales, uh, computer. And uh, every time I heard a snap, I turned around, didn't see him. And so I didn't, didn't think anybody was there. I thought I was hearing things, but eventually I did see him when he blast out of uh, the door mad as hell that I, he didn't get any service, but that L shaped bar was really long and there were blind spots. Another thing that somebody did that annoyed the fuck out of me whistled for me. I can't whistle right now, but uh, they started whistling, you know, the really loud whistle, you know, probably I didn't see him actually do it, but they probably did the two finger thing when you're like whistling for dolphins or something like that. And I spun around mad as hell because they're whistling like that. And they said, excuse me, I'd like a beer. And I said, everybody's over here. I'm not ignoring you. Just everybody's over here and everybody's in a line and I'm doing the best I can. If you want, you want service, you got to get into my line of sight here. Cause all I got is these people standing, waiting for their drink and the first four stools. I don't have the rest of the bar in my line of sight and, you know, and taking time to explain it to him was a, a complete waste of time. So I pretty much learned right after that. Don't explain anything to the customers. Just turn around and uh, turn around and say, what can I get you? And then get it to them as soon as you possibly can, because you've got a really big, uh, I had a really big space that I had to do handle all by myself. And uh, some, some of you bartender managers out there who never served time behind the bar or uh, worked the floor because you were hired on just because you had management skills, you know, probably from McDonald's or something like that. And, not that there's anything wrong with working at McDonald's. I worked at McDonald's for a year and a half. But uh, some, of, some of you managers out there are probably thinking, well, you should have had more people on shift. Well, unfortunately, no. Because the manager I had at the time was a cheap bastard. Yeah, uh, He looked for every single way to save money. And there came a time where uh, Shannon became so... Uh, because they had pool night, uh, pool league night, and karaoke night all at once, and she got overwhelmed. She was like, I need help. Please call the dude. And so they called me up, and I said, all right, I'll be right in. Unfortunately, that was also date night with my ex-girlfriend. It's probably why she's my ex-girlfriend now. No, I actually know the reasons why she's my ex-girlfriend, but it that upset her, but I said, I got called into work. I got to go. And she, uh, she wasn't happy about it, but she let me go. And, uh, so I ran in there and, uh, the place was packed and the power of Shannon and I working together became, uh, really relevant because it went from her having five people wide, 10 people deep on one side of the bar. And then the other side of the bar was five people wide, three people deep. We wiped that out clean really fast. And then all of a sudden we had, uh, had an opportunity to stop and breathe for a minute. And she, uh, she thanked me up and down and sideways for coming in. It was supposed to be my day off. Uh, but, uh, like I said, when I worked at that particular bar, they were going to give her all the prime bar shifts and give me the shit shifts. But it ended up that we ended up sharing a couple of the prime shifts and, uh, I still had to work the shit shifts, uh, you know, sun, uh, Sunday. Well, no, Shannon and I both had Monday off. That's how we became friends. But, um, the, well, be that being said, but the owner and the owner's daughter were incredibly, incredibly cheap. And they sat back and thought, Oh, we only need one bartender on duty. 
But then we started really raking in the customers, especially pool night and karaoke happening at the same time. You've got like uh, one bartender, no dishwasher, no cook, no server, no cocktail waitress, but working by themselves behind the bar and running out of glassware and no time to uh, run the floor to pick up glassware, empty ashtrays because you could smoke back in those times. You want to you talk about uh, something that happened only 10, 10 years ago that you can't do now? Smoking. But uh, that's beyond the point. Uh, we were basically by ourselves from 9 o'clock on, but then uh, when she and I started working together, one of us would have time to go run, uh, run the floor, pick up glassware, empty ashtrays, clean tables, uh, and then cater to the karaoke people and send out the pitchers to the pool league. Uh, it was, uh, it became less stressful for both of us because then you had less people yelling for attention. But when I first started at that bar, uh, before Shannon got there, I was a little overwhelmed because it was the first bar that I worked at. I will admit that, but they never told me that Wednesday nights were pool night. They never told me, uh, that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they did karaoke. And, uh, I got pummeled the first pool night. I didn't, I have any idea what was going on. The manager never communicated with that with me. He just said, there's the bar, go for it. And, uh, so all of a sudden I'm like, where the hell are all these people coming from? Um, uh, realizing I don't have the time to go out on the floor and pick up glassware or, you know, cause I'm cashing out lottery tickets and, uh, try, you know, pouring pitchers and it, uh, it was just hell on me. And, uh, because the manager was too much, uh, of a cheapskate to uh have a there it would have been greatly beneficial to have a cocktail waitress on those nights and but he was cheap self-proclaimed cheap i'm not just saying that about him to be an asshole no he there uh one time we had uh some kind of promotion where ever uh, they brought in blackjack tables and everybody and whoever won the most the you know uh first place second place so who who won the most playing blackjack got a gift certificate for uh for the bar and uh the first time he did it he did a 50 dollar gift certificate for first prize 25 dollar gift certificate for second prize the, the next week he did it it was 25 dollars each and i said they're both 25 dollars now what's up and he actually admitted to me because i'm cheap but like i said the first time that i was doing uh, uh, pool league and karaoke night by myself. I was concentrating on the small L side of the bar and somebody had the gall to throw a coaster at me to get my attention. She just hucked it at me, hit me in the back. And I quickly turned around and said, who did that? And she goes, I need a, uh, I need a beer. And I, I just turned back around, kept serving about five or six more people. Now, in most cases, in my worthless opinion, uh, I should have uh, kicked her out right then and there. But the uh, the bar at the time was suffering a little bit because it was uh, originally a hangout for most of the locals it, when it was owned by a different person. But when the new management took over, they wanted to get rid of all of that element and uh, bring in a totally new uh totally new customers uh so they wanted to get rid of the harley riders they wanted to get rid of uh any uh anybody that they thought would give the bar a bad image unfortunately that was all also the most loyal and paying customers they didn't have any problem with leaving that bar because there was always another place to go in fact the manager of the other bar in town that they decided to go to uh there was jokes constantly about it saying I should go thank them for kicking all those people out because it boosted my business something fierce. But you know, the lady throws a coaster at me and I could have told her get the hell out or at least, uh, at least picked up a pile of coasters because I had a large amount of stacks of coasters behind the bar and started hucking them at her until she left. 
but my mind was on customer service. I hadn't worked in the bar situation uh, that much yet. And so I thought, okay, she threw something at me, smile, go over there and say, what can I get you? And she said, Bud Light. And so I gave her a Bud Light and she paid for it and she tipped me. Yeah, she still tipped me. I didn't see her much after that because like I said, all of her friends uh, were asked to leave the bar. And I believe the story went that he, uh, the manager didn't like the their Harleys parked in front of the bar. So uh, he said, I, uh, they asked if they could park up on the sidewalk uh, you know, so to keep their bikes safe. And he said, I don't want you parking here at all. The manager said, I don't want you parking here at all. And so they said, fine, we're taking business elsewhere. And they did. And yeah, they probably lost. Uh, we had to rebuild the customers from scratch almost. Last thing I'm going to bring up is uh, something that uh, some of you might agree with, some uh, some of you might not, is swearing. Now, in this day and age, uh, they probably cracked down on that a lot more than they did back in my days, uh, uh, only 20 years ago. Because uh, it has become less socially acceptable and that thing is swearing swearing what you know am i going to sit here and talk shit about swearing no i just use the word shit i love swearing swearing is my favorite pastime i love all seven that you're not allowed to say on tv uh, and since this is a podcast i can say shit piss fuck cunt cocksucker motherfucker and tits it's easy now i'm not talking about all kinds of swearing because you can sit down and have a conversation and say, well, the, today was a piece of uh, that piece of shit uh, told me that I needed to take my stuff and get out of there. You know, you know, just having a normal cover conversation. But when it gets to the point where the guy says, fuck every other word and so fucking this. And then I went to the fucking store and had to pick up some fucking bread. And then fucking the cashier told me I, they're fucking, no, 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 that's too much. See, swearing to me is fine. You know, all seven dirty words, I'll listen to them uh, every day. Honest to God, truth to you people, the one swear word that I don't use is bitch. I never, ever use that in any kind of context except for telling you that I don't use the word bitch. The swear words that come out more naturally for me are dumbass or dipshit, but... It, you know, when people use the swear words as a segue to catch, uh, to keep a sentence going, it shows a really, really lack of uh, intelligence, if you ask me. And it's, I mean, how annoying would this podcast be? Because I say, but, and I say that stuff a lot. But if I filled it with fuck or fucking it, uh, I don't think anybody would really listen to this podcast and I'm, you know, and I'm doing pretty good this year. Thank you so much for all my listeners, but it's not, it's not just the seven big ones that really bother me. Actually, the word that bothers me more than the seven dirty words that you can't say is freaking. It gets on my nerves. How uh, these people I worked with a guy who felt so self-righteous. If you swore in front of him, he would talk to the manager and say how he didn't appreciate you swearing in front of him. But he'd go, when he would tell you a story, it would be like, so we freaking went to the store and freaking had to buy some baked beans and freaking the cashier told me that my freaking card didn't freaking work. That is like nails on a chalkboard to me. Just, it, I mean, if you're going to say frickin' that much, just say fuck. You might as well. It means the same thing. You're using it in the same context. It shows your lack of intelligence. Now, it, it you, because you can't complete a thought without saying frickin', 
is just as bad to me as if you can't complete a thought uh, without saying fuck. Now, it, you know, sure, fuck is not socially acceptable, but you've already shown that you don't have you, uh, you don't have a lot of intelligence because you can't complete a sentence without saying one word every other word. For once, though, I would like to see somebody uh, that refuses, you know, they sit back and say, I refuse to say the bad words because it uh, is bad for uh, for whatever reason. And when they have a, uh, when they have a conversation, they substitute, uh, their substitute word is, so I got the spatula uh, baked beans out of the closet. And then the spatula um, had to start up the spatula uh, stove and spatula forgot the matches. You know, that would be hilarious. Anybody wants to do uh, like a YouTube short or something like that, go for it. You have my permission. If you make more than a million dollars, I expect $10 at least, please. Well, that's it for everything. This quick shot episode, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate that. Remember, if you want to contact me, all you have to do is just email me dude at Hey bartender podcast.com, or you can DM me on Instagram or Facebook. Both of those are Hey bartender podcast. Remember to visit the website, www.heybartenderpodcast.com, where you can pick up some Hey bartender podcast swag or listen to uh, past episodes, it's all good to me. Remember that we got a show upcoming on Saturday at 7 o'clock. The next episode uh, will be about something, pretty sure. Don't forget you can listen to all the past episodes on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Take your pick. Special thanks to tasteofhome.com for giving us or letting me steal the recipe for their watermelon margaritas and a special thanks of course to laura hope and the arctones uh for starting off the show and let me use that as a theme song i think that's what fallon does he does he think the roots every night or does he just intro- introduce them at the beginning i don't remember but anyway people as usual at the end of every episode i've got to wish you all lots of love lots of sex lots of happiness and don't take any shit from anyone. Get out. What do you mean it's last go? I just got. It.